a wife of wisdom. Uh, a little over 20 years ago, uh, there was a young man that was a wood turning artist and he was pretty broken and didn't really understand what life was all about and, and uh, was lost. A, a lost professing Christian and that young man was out in his wood shop making some wooden bowls and things to sell at art galleries where he was exhibiting his work and that young man stayed up through most of the night it was very early in the morning and uh, just to spoil the su suspense here uh, if you can't already figure it out the young man was me and I walked outside and I looked up in the sky and I said God I know you're out there I know you're up there and I said uh, I want wisdom I want wisdom I said, I don't even know what that means, but I just, I want wisdom. I want to know what I'm supposed to do with my life. And, and Lord, I want wisdom. That's all I prayed. I walked in, went to bed. And, uh, boy, the next day I had it. <laughs> no, uh, it took quite a few years before the Lord really led me in the paths of wisdom. And uh, James chapter 1, verse 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom... Let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. I couldn't have quoted that verse to save my life back then. I didn't even know it existed in the Bible. I didn't even have a King James Bible. I had an NIV for crying out loud back in those years. Um, I only go to a church occasionally and whatever else. And it was usually to you know, check out if there were any good-looking girls there and whatever. Good place to meet girls. I mean, these church buildings are a great place to meet a lot of uh, girls, a lot of them with very loose morals going to these churches. But uh, they're social clubs, so, you know, that's what I'm saying there. They're not holy places. Uh, there's none, no scripture for them, if you don't understand. But uh, I wanted wisdom, and I meant it. Uh, it wasn't the fake Christianity stuff that I'd been doing all my life. I truly meant, God, I want wisdom. And the Lord heard that prayer. Uh, so for all the people out there to just say that salvation and relationship to God is all just intellectual, well, you're just a Gnostic lost devil, that's all you are. Um, no, there's there's a thing of calling upon the Lord. And uh, he answered my prayer. And the Lord started to show me truth. And I got saved. And uh, after calling upon the Lord, I got saved. He saved me. And years went by and I studied and researched a lot, a whole lot. And I started to really desire to have a wife and uh, help me for the ministry and um, Lord brought my wife into my life and gave us a son and all the amazing things that we've been through and together and uh, an event happened on Tuesday of this week and uh, it caused me to do some real thinking and um, I'll tell more about that event that happened here as we continue but it it came into my mind for the first time since I've been married that uh, the wisdom that I asked for was certainly truth from the, the Lord. The Holy Spirit of God came upon me and led me into all truth. But there was more to it than that. The wisdom that God gave me was actually the wisdom of my wife that uh, she's taught me over the years and she's shown me some things. And God speaks through my wife a lot. And I'm thankful for her. Um, so... But uh, let's go back to Proverbs chapter 8. I'm going to read two chapters in Proverbs today to kind of tie into this whole thing. And I'll tell you about the great moment of revelation that I had. <laughs> and it's still with me. I'll explain later. Proverbs chapter 8. Doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places by the way and the places of the paths. Huh. Wisdom is likened to a woman. Hmm. Rather interesting. She crieth at the gates. Remember this for later too. At the entry of the city and the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, <clears throat> and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools be ye of an understanding heart. Here, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. 
All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that hath to him that understandeth, and write to them that find knowledge. Re receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Um, a virtuous woman is far above rubies. Huh. And a woman is likened here to wisdom. Very interesting. Um, from time to time, we've had viewers send us... Uh, silver and even a gold coin or two or, or things and and uh, i'm i do believe in precious metals i think it's a good thing i wouldn't put all of my money into them or whatever but you know it's uh, the inflationary currency and the you know central bank digital currencies and all the other stuff that they want to come out with and the cryptocurrencies and all this stuff uh some physical gold and silver is okay um it's not perfectly secure but it's not a waste of money or whatever else either but uh Ironically, had some silver and some gold on Tuesday morning before coming here to work. And um, it's been really weird. The temperatures have been really off and it gets really warm and it rains onto the snow and then it freezes overnight and whatever else. Well, came out in the morning and we had actually gotten some silver and some gold. Not a huge amount or anything like that, obviously. but uh, And I was going to take it over towards the vehicle and and um and i'm walking and i have so i have stuff in my hand so i can't hold on to anything as i'm going down the steps and i look and i think those steps look icy about an inch of ice on them and i was kind of bumpy and i thought it might not be too slippery now if i would ask my wife's opinion i know what she would have said she would have said don't go down those steps i know she would have but in my stubborn pride i thought how bad could it be? I'm not going, I won't be hurt. I'll be fine. I'll be all right. I'll, I can do it. I have to get this done quick. And, you know, we have to get ready to leave. You know, come on. And I'm trying to get, let's get going. We have to get down to the office and everything else. So I have crampons is what they're called. They're, they're like ice cleats and they, they strap onto your boots. And I was, you know, again, my wife would have told me, you know, put your crampons on, you know, and, and that still small voice of the Holy Spirit kind of said, uh, I don't think you should go down the steps. But stubborn, thick-headed pride, my... Yeah. I'll be all right. I'll be fine. So, I step down on the first step. That's ah, not that bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. I'm good. Take my step on... Go down to the next step. And, um, and it was just almost like I was pushed. Down the steps. Bam, 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 bam down on my lower back and you can still see I mashed my fingers pretty good you can kind of see it there they're pretty much healed they were black and blue and all cut up and blood all over the place from going down the steps and my thumb on this side there's just a little tiny bit of a cut there ripped a chunk out of my finger right there you can kind of see it um, hopefully you can see that uh, right on that middle finger there um, yeah I got hurt bad and uh, I've had a long history of injuring my lower back. <laughs> um, dirt biking as a teenager, then logging, I lifted items that were too heavy and you know ruined my lower back pretty badly. Went to a chiropractor and because of my lower back pain, and he said he's you know adjusting my back and he gets to the lower part of my spine and he says, "Uh oh." That's always a good thing when you have somebody say, "Uh oh," that's working on you. And I said, "What?" And he said, "Your uh, your lower discs are deteriorating." Oh, that's all, you know, that's good. And so, and then I wore logging boots with the high heel, which throws you, you know, you, you end up going like this forward because of the high heels, and then you correct by going like this, you know, and, and so you're putting a lot of pressure on your lower back, and boy, getting rid of those heels on boots was one of the best things I ever did. That's been quite a few years now. Uh, just right before I met my wife, I was actually getting rid of the high heels on my logging boots. Um, but accident after accident i was in an atv accident the one time when i was doing construction work hauling some roof metal back it shifted hit the throttle and the atv went like that i went flipping off the back onto some rocks i fell backwards when i was logging landed on a pointed rock bruised my pelvis had to go to the hospital um so i've just i've had a long history of destroying my lower back well 
uh, this past Tuesday, just a few days ago, um, we're Thursday today right now, so what, two days ago, um, I went down a whole flight of stairs on my lower back, and um, there was about, like I said, about an inch of ice on each step, cracked the ice uh, from my weight, just slamming into it, going down, and uh, it hurt bad, and I knew, okay, I really just did some damage. Um, thankfully, I'm standing. Thankfully, I can move my legs, but uh, bending down right now is not happening. Um, it's been uh, really painful, um, extremely painful. Uh, and why? Well, because I didn't ask for the wisdom of my wife. Um, she's been there to really irritate me over the years because, you know, I'll go to cut something with a chainsaw and she'll set, get your hearing protection on. It's just a real quick, do you want to lose your hearing? Well, no, too tough to put your hearing protection on there, honey. <sighs> All right, <laughs> put the hearing protection on. I know she's right. I know she's right. She has wisdom. I have pride a lot of times in stubbornness. Now I'm just going to cut this. Where's your safety glasses at? It's just going to take it. Put your safety glasses on. I wish I would listened to her the other day. If I would listen to her, I wouldn't be in the pain that I'm in right now. I mean, my whole backside and coming up uh, down in the backside area there and then up into my lower back, it's just purple right now. Um, extremely painful. Why? Well, uh, I should have listened to her because I know what she would have said. But I just had to get out there quick before she knew what I was doing. I'll just make this thing happen quick and, you know, the whole deal. But I just thought it was rather interesting there about wisdom it says receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold and i'm actually carrying that stuff out to the vehicle and you know that's why i couldn't support myself with my hands because i've had it in my hands like this and you know oh, i'll be fine and walk down the steps and down i go so if you could please pray for me by the way i am being serious about this whole thing i would really appreciate people's prayers um i've been doing a lot of superfoods and a lot of natural health things that will help to get blood circulating and help to heal the bones and whatever else. I hope I didn't permanently destroy anything, but uh, there's just a lot of swelling back there right now. And, and it's, uh, like I said, it's been very painful, um, but I have to learn. Sometimes the Lord has to really, you know, kick me in the rear to get me to learn. And that was a good time for it. <laughs> I wisdom dwell with prudence, verse 12, Proverbs 8, verse 12. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. You'd be better off having wisdom than you would with the precious metals, in other words. I lead in the way of righteousness in the, wit in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning, or ever ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were set, settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest parts of the dust of the world. When he repaired the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave to the sea his decree, and the waters should that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable parts of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. 
But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Interesting, because in Ephesians chapter 5, you're not supposed to hate your wife. You're supposed to love her and cherish her and nourish her. And uh, she'll do good to you. If you hate your wife, your prayers are hindered. Hmm. And you can start to hate your wife in different ways. You say, no, I love her. I thought you... But do you hate it when she's right and you're wrong? Do you hate it when the Lord uses her to say something to rebuke you? But what about the, whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord? Huh. Keep your hand there in Proverbs chapter 9, but go over to Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. You know, the, the most um, amazing asset out there, the greatest thing that's worth more money than anything else out there, the, the thing that a, a saved man should want more than anything else is a wife of wisdom. And then having the humility to submit to what she's saying, the Lord speaking through her when she's right. I understand the biblical roles there. A wife is supposed to be submissive to her husband and everything else. Absolutely. But you know what? There are times when the Lord, the only way he can get through to you as a husband, as a man of God, is through that wife of yours, if she's saved. I know that there's men out there that don't have saved wives, and that's a problem. Women out there that don't have saved husbands, single people and everything else. But um, there's a, a really great thing there. If you can find somebody, if you're saved, and you can find a wife that has some wisdom, and that she's wanting to serve the Lord with her life. And, you know, there's some big, there's some real deep stuff here in this study, and I don't even know how to get into all of it or expound it correctly and whatever else. Wisdom was there before the foundation of the world. She's there. God's created in the world and everything else. And it's not the Holy Spirit, by the way. There's a David Koresh, the crazy Branch Davidian guy. He taught that, uh, that this Proverbs chapters 8 and 9 were about the Holy Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's... Not true. Uh, wisdom there is what it's talking about. So don't let anybody fool you on that one. Let's go back to our text here. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 1. Wisdom hath builded her house. The uh, godly woman builds her house. The foolish woman plucks it down with her own hands. The Bible talks about. She hath hewn out uh, her seven pillars. She hath killed her beasts. She hath mingled her wine, she hath also furnished her table. She, has sent, she hath sent forth her maidens, she crieth upon the highest places of the city. Hmm. Um, if you go back to chapter 8, verse 2, She standeth in the top of high places by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, verse 3, at the entry of the city, and at the coming in at the doors. She's not afraid to speak against evil, in other words. I thank the Lord for my wife in that area. Um... But uh, now it switches here. Go back to Proverbs chapter 9, verse 4. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. She's talking about the highest, it's talking about the highest places of the city. The things where the people go and it's the, oh, the, the best churches and, oh, the best lodges, you know, Masonic Lodge or the fraternal this or the, the clubs and the country club and whatever. Uh huh. Highest places of the city there. Whoso is simple, doesn't have understanding, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, in other words, he's asking for wisdom, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish, and live, and go in the way of understanding. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame, and he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. In other words, don't waste your time on people that don't want to hear the truth. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Um... My flesh sometimes, I act like a scorner to my wife. I've done that over the years. And a lot of husbands do that to their wives too. Um, you kind of, oh, honey, okay, all right, yeah. You're a woman, you don't understand these things. And you, you start to scorn her. You laugh her to scorn. Maybe you'd do well to listen to her. Uh, rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Um, when a man of God has a woman of God, a real true woman of wisdom, a wife of wisdom, um, 
and she tells him certain things and he tries it out. Okay, I'll, I'll go with your suggestion, honey. What do you think about this? Do you think I should buy this or do you think I should invest in that? Or let me sit down and let's talk about this. Let's have some meetings here. Let's, you know, communication being one of the keys to a good, happy marriage. Okay, let's sit down. Let's, I'm not making this decision on my own. I want you to give me your input. Pray about it before you do. And she gives you that wisdom and you say, well, that's not what I was planning, but uh, actually what you said makes a lot of sense. And um, you're right, I do have some pride and I do have some problems with this thing and that's why I was doing that or whatever else. Hmm. If you love uh, wisdom, you will take a rebuke and then you actually end up loving your wife even that much more. Verse 9, give instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me, speaking of wisdom here, for by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. If I had uh, had my wife around a lot longer, you know, earlier, um, I'd probably be in a lot better health right now. Um, if thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself, but if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. I've seen that. Uh, she's not hurting right now. She doesn't have any back pain. <laughs> I'm the one that's uh, bearing it. Uh, I'm the one that's scorning it. And you know, uh, she. I know what she's going to say. Yeah, put on your ice cleats. Don't go down the steps. You know, use your brain here, honey. Oh, come on. I don't like using my brain. I like to go down and prove how tough I am. <laughs> not too smart. Verse 13. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city. Huh. This woman, the, the woman of wisdom, the wife of wisdom, she stands. Uh, where does it say it there? Um, uh, verse, chapter 8, verse 2. She standeth in the top of high places by the way of the, in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates at the entry of the city. She's standing there. She says, I'm not, no, I'm not sitting down. Oh, come on, sit down and fellowship with us and play a little bridge or play, you know. She's standing up and saying, no, I don't want anything to do with that. But the simple woman, the one that's clamorous, that just, you know, blah, 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 just, you know, can't keep her breath warm kind of thing, just has to talk to everybody and, you know, wants to be the life of the party. She sits down in the high places of the city, the respectable circles and the nice things and whatever else. And she's, she's concerned with what, you know, her images and whatever else, her social credit score, you might say. <laughs> um, verse 15, to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, stolen waters are secret or are, are sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he that but he knoweth not that the dead are there and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> the most evil, wicked people out there are the ones that are in the um, high places in the city, in the, in the, you know, Trump Tower or whatever else, places like that, you know, Masonic fraternal things and sororities and fraternities at universities and I'm sitting on the town council and I'm, I'm here and I'm there. The higher up you get in society, the more of a scum bucket you are. It's an old saying, you know, the, the thing with, with a pond is that the scum always rises to the top. A lot of truth to that in terms of society. Um, a wise woman won't be influenced by that. I don't care what people think about me. Uh, I'm going to read my Bible and I'm going to try to do what I can to serve the Lord and try to make my husband, trying to bring him up. And if I see him doing something prideful and, and stupid, I'm going to try to come to him and rebuke him in a loving way so that it will make him better and he'll have longer life. And I'll tell you what, uh, men out there, that's what you need to pray for. Mm -hmm. um, and you need, to, you need to, if you have a wife that's like that, lower your pride and listen to her. I wish I had. <laughs> um, I wouldn't be in so much pain right now. You're laying in bed and you lay on this side and then you can't if you lay if I lay on my back it hurts really bad so I have to go over on my other side and uh, yeah. it's rough but uh, I deserve it I've done this a few times 
If we go over to Proverbs chapter 31, does it say, does this line up with the Proverbs 31 woman? Is the Proverbs 31 woman, is she a wife of wisdom? Yes, she is. Proverbs chapter 31, we won't read through the whole thing. You can read through it yourself. But uh, verse 26 says, she openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Uh, you're a single guy out there. Let me give you some advice. Pray about getting a wife of wisdom, a wife that uh, loves the Lord and is not afraid to stand for the truth, that doesn't care what people think about her, doesn't, it's not a high society, high maintenance type of a woman. You get a woman like that, she'll destroy you. She's clamorous. She's simple. She doesn't know anything. She'll just go on and be destroyed. Um, you want a wife that's going to lovingly correct you sometimes because you can't know everything. And uh, as we were talking about this, I had this conversation after my fall and I was inside trying to take care of some things with you know natural health and making different you know teas and whatever else that I can use to help lower the pain and get circulation going and anti-inflammatory stuff and whatever else and taking my wife's advice and we were talking about this whole thing and she said you know it's kind of an interesting way to put it and I said what do you mean she said uh, if you want wisdom in life you should find a wife and I said write that down for me Let's see if I can come over here there's her writing right there Wisdom in life equals a wife. You got the W of the wisdom and then I-F-E, wife. Hmm, pretty profound. Uh, it's available to anybody. There's no man out there that can't say, well, God just didn't provide me with, you know. Well, you know, you, you reap what you sow. A lot of men, they, they marry women that are silly and clamorous and whatever else, high maintenance wives because they look really good you know they fell in lust with her but um, if you're a man out there and you have a wife um, encourage her to have wisdom to open herself up to that spirit of wisdom that can come from the Lord there um, and listen to her encourage her so uh, hopefully that's been a challenge to you out there I know it's uh, been a it was a real eye-opener for me because I just, as much as I try to really change and do right for the Lord and things, I'm still just as dumb as a box of rocks sometimes. And I just think, oh, I shouldn't have done that. That was really stupid. And and uh, so I'm hoping I don't have any real permanent damage or anything else. Um, you know, I, I talk a lot about, you know, I will never go to the hospital for any reason. And I still hold to that because of what the hospitals are now. And... Um, but I was tempted <laughs> and I was thinking about this whole thing and I mean I fell and it was just oh man it hurts so bad um, probably the worst back injury I've ever had to date because you know it's it's kind of cumulative so <laughs> it just keeps getting worse and falling down and just slam 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 you know down a, a number of stairs before I finally hit the ground and laying there and, and you know there's blood and, and things from my hands where I came smashing down I couldn't grab on to anything because I was holding uh, the stuff that we got and and um, and boy is a rough lesson to learn but uh, it's been a blessing actually <laughs> you know when the Bible talks about in weakness that's when you have strength with the Lord well I've been praying a lot more and I've been thinking a lot more about things and and just uh, okay Lord I'm I'm actually very thankful um, for this thing that you had to reveal to me and I need to do a better job of listening in the future and consulting her my, my wife about wisdom and things and um, so <laughs> I just pray out there if you're a if you're a saved sister in the Lord and you're married I pray that you would really open yourself up to that spirit of wisdom and say, I want to be a, a woman of wisdom, a wife of wisdom to my husband. I want to, to be his counselor and um, just be open to the Lord and, and say, Lord, just show me what I need to do. Show me how I need to live. So that is going to be it. And as I said earlier, please do pray for my back because it's not much fun right now. Um, so... Um,
but that will be it. And of course, anybody has any suggestions or whatever else, things to heal. Uh, it's a lot of bruising right now, a lot of swelling back on my back. Um, I'm going to be probably getting some bone broth, uh, doing some of that and uh, some good bone soup stock type of a thing to help out with my my deteriorating discs in, in my back. Um, you know, I've been, you know, raw milk, cacao, camu, camu, acai berry, soursop. Um, I took some um, cayenne pepper with some camu, camu in a, in a, like a teacup of water this morning. I drank that because I know cayenne pepper is really good with circulation. And so I thought, well, that'll probably help out with the, the bad bruising. And, and uh, the pain has just been off the charts. I mean, it's really been bad. And, and I just want to say this, too, just as a little bit of encouragement to people out there. Um, when it happened, I got up. I had to go walk a few areas on our property. So I just dealt with the pain, went and did what I needed to do, came back. And I thought, you know, this voice in my head was saying, you know, I think the Lord was trying to tell me, you know, just go in, lay down a little bit, you know, try to be here today and, and uh, go for a walk out in the woods, whatever, put your snowshoes on, go take a walk out through the, the fir forest or whatever else, because that's really good. The natural essential oils that come off the trees are really good for your health and you need some fresh air and you need to keep blood flow moving and everything. Now I have to get to work. So... <laughs> Came here instead, you know, got into our Jeep, which was not very easy to do because it's kind of cramped. I'm, I'm pretty big for a Jeep Cherokee. And so I got in and driving to work and it was, oh man, this really hurts. Barely get my legs swung out. And, and then it came here and I sat down at the computer and I was doing some work, trying to get caught up with some emailing and other, you know, things I was trying to do. And it just, okay, I'm really hurting bad. I think I, we need to go home. And I was, I was really on the brink of maybe I should go to the hospital because it's really hurting bad. And I just kept thinking, no, I don't want to go into one of them places. And, and then I just told myself, okay, calm down, calm down. Let's go through the check here. All right. Can you move your feet? Yes. Can you wiggle your toes? Yes. Can I walk? Yes. Am I having difficulty breathing? Is there any kind of blood coming out when I go to the bathroom? Is there... No, you know, I'm, I'm fine. I can breathe fine. I, there's no blood or anything else. And, and I went through the whole list of, of checks and I thought, okay, what are they going to do if I go to the hospital? Well, I know what they're going to do. They're going to give me a morphine shot and then they're going to put me into some kind of an x-ray thing. Okay, see if I broke anything or whatever else. Well, I don't think I broke anything because I can move around. I can turn. There's no crunching or anything else. I think it's just a bad sort of a muscle impact injury. And I thought, well, I don't really want morphine in my system. And then, of course, they would give me pharmaceutical drugs that would be some kind of high-level painkiller. Don't want that either. And I thought, okay, well, what can I do for pain? Well, we had bought some ghost pipe tincture, um, which is really powerful stuff. It's Ghost pipe is a little white herb. It almost looks like a fungal growth, like a little upside-down pipe, Indian pipe, they call them, too. And uh, you put it with a high-proof alcohol, like 190-proof alcohol, and I uh, found some... Uh, herbalist down in Vermont that, that sold some on eBay and it turns dark purple, this tincture. It basically pulls the constituents out of the herb and then it makes it a very strong, potent medicine. And um, you take a couple drops of it. I'm not sitting around drinking bottles of 190 proof alcohol or anything by any means, but uh, you put a few drops on your tongue and it will help out with pain and it does very much. Not habit forming or anything else, you won't become addicted to it unless you forcibly do it. Probably in your mind you could, I guess. But um, that helped out quite a bit. And then just natural health, uh, really doing things. Okay, Lord, what should I do next and whatever else. And, and uh, my chair, my rustic chair that I had in my office that you'd see in some of the live streams that I made, not really a good place to be sitting for a long period of time. I mean, it's more of a artsy type of chair and things. It's not really good lower back support. Um, and so... You know, they, my wife and my son said, well, take it out of here. Don't worry about it. You know, we'll put a computer chair in at your desk. So that's what I have right now. And um, just praying, exercising, trying to get do what I can to get this back. But I just would like to put out the request there. Body of Christ, please pray for my back for healing for it. 
and um, that I would learn my lesson from this and uh, listen to my wife of wisdom in the future. So, um, but I'm open to anybody's suggestion out there, uh, some things I might not have thought of or whatever else. But uh, I'm very blessed that uh, it wasn't worse than what it was. Um, so, but that's going to be it. And uh, just love the Word of God so much. It's such an amazing book. And um, so we will see you in upcoming studies. I'm going to be doing some more stuff on nutrition and uh, some surprise videos coming up here, um, some interesting stuff. Um, I think in the way of the future, probably 2022, I'm going to be putting out a lot of different videos, not just scripture studies like I normally do, but I'm going to be putting out, I'm going to be interspersing some other stuff into the ministry just to simply show people, number one, I'm not just some little preacher boy that went to a Baptist church and I don't know anything but how to be a good Baptist or something like that. Uh, there are some other talents and skills the Lord's given me, so I'm going to be showing some of that this year just to kind of show people to, to push me away from the church building heights that are, you know, the little, you know, smooth faced, uh, skinny little fingered, um, little preacher boy types that, that don't know how to do anything but preach the word of God, um, because that's all they were raised with and whatever else. Uh, I can, I can do a lot of different things. So I'm going to be showing some of that this year. Um, and also to try to get more people to the channel here. Um, that's been another thing I've been praying about a lot. Just simply the thing of, you know, should I promote this channel? Should I try to make the channel grow and make it get better? And, and my plan of attack for many years has just been, no, you know, just let it go and whatever else. But the problem is YouTube has suppressed this and, and my views just continually get pushed down and whatever. And it's, I don't want that to happen. I want this ministry to really be able to reach a lot more people. So I would greatly appreciate it if uh, out there if people like, subscribe, share the videos with others, send them to people and things. Um, that's very important. I know a lot of people actually will download these videos, put them on DVD and, and give them to elderly people that don't have internet connection. I really find that to be great as well. That's a, a neat thing when I hear people doing that. You have my complete permission to do that. Anybody can copy my videos, put them onto another channel or whatever else. I just ask that you don't change them and cut them up and make me look bad. There's enough of those out there. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's what I want to make happen. I'm willing to put myself out there and um, try my best to serve the body of Christ so that you can profit both in your health and also spiritually. So um, that is going to be it. And uh, please do pray for my back. And we will see you in upcoming studies. Thank you very much for watching and thank you for your kind words of encouragement.